I think we are living a very exciting period. If I could use a, let's say, James Bond sentence, I would say the world will never be the same. That will change the way we practice medicine in hematology and oncology. Recently approved in Europe and the USA, CAR-T cell therapy is offering new hope for patients with rare cancers. But how difficult is it to run this program? Joining me now are some of the top experts in the field to discuss this further. Thank you all very much for joining us. Alvaro, maybe we could start with you. Just to give us a background very quickly, where are we now with CAR-T cell therapy? Okay, so we, now we have the evidence that CAR-T cells are very effective for treating patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia and non lymphoma in a very difficult situation, in relapsed refractory. So, this is uh, very clear now, and also that there are many clinical trials trying to discover in which other indications, in which other diseases is also effective this, this uh, therapy, this CAR th therapy. Let me ask you all, how, how much is this being used in your hospitals and, and for whom? Christian, let me start with you. We started the program uh, in Marseille uh, f approximately three months ago. Uh, we had several uh, clinical research protocols starting and at the same time we also were qualified for the uh, commercial uh, use of approved products. And, and who are the patients that you're treating? Uh, basically we are treating adult patients with acute lymphoplastic leukemia because are the patients in which they need, urgently need the, this type of treatment. Sylvia, let me bring you in here. What are the overall challenges for rolling it out further across Europe, would you say? Obviously, not all the centres can be CAR-T um, centres and the health systems need to dis decide what centres are qualified uh, for that. And the health systems also need to, to deal with the funding. It's still quite an expensive uh, uh, therapy, so there has to be a, a specific selection of the patients that really can benefit from it. And what about at a departmental level, Alvaro, departmental coordination, how important is that? Well, I think it's, uh, it's an, a paradigm of a multidisciplinary team working because uh, you don't need only a, a physician with expertise in cell therapy, but also an intensive care unit person. You have also the needs of a neurologist, also people from the lab because we are treating with a new drug and a living drug. Let me ask you all a little bit more about the actual treatment itself now. Uh, Sylvia, I'll start with you. Is it a complete game changer, would you say? I think that it will be maybe a game changer for lymphoma is a bit too much, but it will be for specific uh, types of lymphoma or for specific groups that it might not be that they are very numerous. It might not be lots and lots of patients, but these are, there are populations that have a very, very poor prognosis, and this can be what... Something really important I think we need to stress is that the two approved products got approval based on non-randomized studies and limited number of treated patients. This is not what happens with conventional drugs. So this means we need to uh, carefully evaluate the value of these costly um, uh, medications in real life conditions after uh, marketing approval. And this is where EBMT is playing a role with its registry. When the bone marrow transplant failed, uh, these cars have proven a, a high efficacy, but now is the time to demonstrate a real efficacy against other standard uh, treatment to pass from the very advanced disease to intermediate stage or even early stage of the disease, it must be done. And, and how much is going on in terms of that coordination at the moment, Christian? EBMT uh, has worked hard to comply with EMA requirements and recently got a positive opinion to qualify the registry, introducing a new form that allows to collect uh, important information on the nature of the product, whether commercial or investigational, and the follow-up of patients. Uh, we, ha we have to remind that CAR T cells are gene therapy medicinal products, are genetically modified organisms. We use lantiviral or retroviral vectors to insert the CAR into the lymphocytes and FDA and EMA have mandated 15 years follow-up of the patients. 15 years is a very long time. Where's your vision? I'd love to hear from each of you which, what your vision is for the future, how you see the science growing over the few next years. Well, as I said, I think that it's a, 
identify the populations that will really benefit. I totally agree with, with Sylvia and I think that now it should expand uh, the application of the CAR to other diseases. Now it's restricted to lymphoid malignancies. I think that there are other hematological malignancies and also solid tumors. And anything to add to that question? I think we are living a very exciting period. If I could use the let's say James Bond sentence, I would say the world will never be the same. Uh, what we cannot really measure is the amplitude of the chance that it will introduce in our daily practice, but for sure that will change the way we practice medicine in hematology and oncology. Well, on that note, thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. <laughs>